Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. So I want to talk to you about something that these entities I call the machine elves told me. Um, it's probably going to sound pretty crazy because maybe it is a little bit crazy. Uh, these machine elves are entities I met on psychedelic drugs. This specific experience I'm going to be telling you about is an experience I had when I combined LSD and magic mushrooms. Um, but do I believe it's real? I do. I actually do. I believe these machine elves are real entities and I believe what they tell me. Um, and after this video, that's going to probably sound especially crazy. <laughs> but uh, look, before I was into psychedelics at all, before I'd ever tried any psychedelics, I was basically a nihilist. I, um, I only believed, well, I was an atheist for sure, a very strong atheist, and I only believed in what science could prove. Um, and if science couldn't prove something, then I didn't believe in its existence. And anyone else who is brave enough to believe in something that is not provable by science, I thought I just called them a fool. What I never realized was just, well, I guess how close-minded I was. You know, we can watch cartoon shows with mad genius scientists inside the cartoon, and they're probably able to work out everything about the objective cartoon reality. Uh, but the only thing they can't work out is the fact that they are a cartoon character being watched by entities that have nothing to do with the cartoon physics and that are just so beyond what these scientific tools could pick up. It's okay, Beth. I'm not offended. It's kind of like that. Like, I was just closed-minded to the fact that that could be in the nature of our reality. I just did not consider that this reality was so much bigger than what I thought it was. I could not imagine that my that science was only able to examine such a small part of what's really going on here. Don't know why I did it like that, Jesus. Then I started having some serious psychedelic experiences, which I didn't think were possible, so that started opening up my mind. And then I met the Machinos. And the Machinos changed everything. When I started taking psychedelics, I realized it wasn't really practical to believe in nothing. Um, and in the end of the day, like reality is so beyond my own comprehension that just to have an idea of what reality is, is to believe in something. So being a nihilist was definitely a belief system. So I decided, well, maybe I should believe in meaning and maybe I should believe in these things around me, these people that I meet and the emotions that we feel and all this sort of stuff. Maybe it's time to believe in that stuff. And um, I did. Then I met the machine elves and they were hyper real. They were realer than real. People talk about, you know, taking DMT and all of a sudden the veil is lifted. Um, that didn't happen to, to me until I met the machine elves. When I met the machine elves, that's when I had that experience where I was like, whoa, like these guys are real. <laughs> like, I don't know what real is, but these things are woven deep in the fabric of the universe, far deeper than we are. At least that's how it felt. So, you know, if I was going to, believe in anything. I had to believe in these machine elves because they felt realer than anything else I've ever experienced before. Certainly the machine elf entity felt realer than the, another human being. Like these things are insane when you meet them. But that's great for me because these beings are absolutely benevolent. Um, they have nothing but beautiful messages to share. Um, literally the most cliche things that you always hear around you but never pay much attention to. Like all you need is love and um, you're as happy as you want to be, all these sort of things. That's actually the message they say. But when they say it, you listen to them. <laughs> um, and yeah, they've, they've, they've explained some things to me and I have applied it in my life and it's rung true. Um, so, which is fantastic. I think for sure these machine elves have helped me become a much happier person. Obviously, a lot of people would probably want to slam me for suggesting that there's a possibility of having an experience after we die. Um, but I'm not necessarily saying that at all. I think probably that this experience happens as we are dying and our brain chemistry is changing, you know, oxygen and blood stop being pumped to our brain. Um, it's very possible that um, it's simulating a, like a psychedelic experience. Um, and I think even there's tests showing that DMT is released in the pineal gland of rats when they die, which would explain why studies have shown they have a really strong surge in brain activity. Uh, that same thing might be happening to us as well, which would explain why we could have these sort of experiences that we have on psychedelics after we die. I've talked about in videos before as well, whether or not I believe entities are real and all the rest of it. So, I mean, um, I'll, I'll probably link that here. If I'm talking to some, some skeptics right now, but I'm gonna try and get the skeptics out of my mind because this video, 
I'm not going to be able to talk about it in good detail if I am going to have skeptics in my mind because it is pretty crazy, as I already said. I might as well just get into it. Just before I do, I uh, wanted to mention this video sponsor, Green to Health. They make um, herbal supplements called MDNT. There's uh, several different variations of it. I know there's one for sleep, there's one for energy, there's one for uh, pain reduction, I believe. My personal favorite is the sleep one. Um, but yeah, they include ingredients such as Kratom and 5-HTP. So obviously do your research when you have a look at the ingredients list to make sure it gels well with you. But it does give you a strong high and it feels great. So I recommend checking it out. If you do make a purchase, use my name, uh, Trip Whip, when you make the order and uh, the guy who runs it will give you 15% more product. Anyway, this specific experience happened after I uh, combined LSD and magic mushrooms and uh, decided to smoke some weed and, and meditate on my roof. Um, this was about a month after I'd met the machine oils on DMT. So this time, even though I hadn't met the machine oils before uh, my DMT trip as well, the DMT just made it way more vivid. So, um, and I could actually see them in their form and everything. So this time when they appeared, it was, it was far more clear than I, what I was expecting. Um, basically, they just appeared in this flash of white light and I could see them like they, they were imprinted in the white light as all these like smiling humans. Um, but I could barely recognize their faces. I could just see smiling, smiling faces in the light. It seemed like they entered from another time dimension. Like if I'm this like space time is this stream, it seemed like they just entered from the side. After this, they then asked if they could channel themselves into me. I was allowing these entities to just show me things and I was getting deeper and deeper. And uh, eventually I just entered a place uh, which I, I did not recognize at all, but I just knew that what I was seeing was what happens to us after we die. And that is what the entities that were with me were explaining. Um, it was so deep that I basically felt like I was dead, dead myself at this point. But this is what they showed me. So basically when we die, we actually become one of the machine elves. What these machine elves are is hard to explain. I'll probably make a video in the future um, analyzing it because, you know, obviously it will take a while for me to get into it here. But to put it quite briefly, they may even be uh, what has been depicted as angels throughout history. I think that the machine elves are these translators of this white light. The white light is that thing that is described in a lot of near death experiences that people see when they die. Um, I've met it on DMT and the machine I was the one who took me to the white light and it's weird. It's, it's kind of, I think, what a lot of people have described as God and what is kind of represented as God in uh, a lot of ancient texts. Because the white light is just, it's good. It's, it seems to be the truth. It's the, when I entered it, it felt like I was there for eternity, but in a moment. It seems to be the eternal now, which is the moment. But I find this interesting as well because it's like a lot of cartoon depictions of people after they die um, are of them as being in the form of angels. They'll have wings, they'll have a halo. It's like a subconscious part of us that kind of knows that this is something that happens when we die. Anyway, once we've actually become one of these machine of entities, what I was shown happens next is, well, you know that there's that idea that when we, or just before we die, our life flashes before our eyes? Well, the machine elves were actually showing me that this happens as you die. And your entire life, every single memory you've ever had, kind of undergoes that process, except it's not just like this quick fleeting moment of you reflecting on your past. Your memories are not what we think they are. Certainly not what I thought they were anyway. Um, basically the machine elves said, we travel back into each one of our memories and we actually watch ourselves in these memories until we eventually get to the very first memory we ever had. And they're not watching us through like as we're experiencing it right now. It's not like a first perspective experience. It's like they're watching it as an audience member around us. Kind of like in that movie Interstellar, how I think he goes into a wormhole or something like that and then he sees himself through a bookcase in the past um, except in the movie he interacts with it and, and I don't really know if that's going on um, in this process. But speaking of wormholes, I think that's how this is kind of happening because I always thought memories were just like impressions of the past, shallow impressions of the past. Whereas like you're not actually, if you have a memory, you're not actually like traveling back in time to that moment. 
you're just kind of remembering the emotions and you're remembering the feelings and stuff and it's just stored data that kind of comes up to your mind when you remember. But what these entities were kind of showing me, I think, is that a memory is, well, actually the past. So if you have a memory, you are traveling back in your mind to the past, or at least a part of your consciousness is. Um, so you're, I think your brain is utilizing super technology um, and probably utilizing wormholes to connect us from here to the past. I imagine it's like when we're born, we are starting off at like this one point, and then we travel along this line that's in the shape of a snake until eventually we get to our death. And then in between these layers of space-time are these maybe black holes, which then attract uh, different aspects of space-time together and that when they meet that creates this wormhole and i think that's the technology that's being used uh, which allows us to have a memory and it's the same technology that allows us to travel back through each memory as a machine off after we've died and perhaps this allows us to have experiences of future moments i i have it myself so maybe not but who knows <laughs> now just another part of this is um i didn't know whether or not i should mention this or not because it's kind of well it wasn't during the same trip that i saw this or experienced this, but uh, it's kind of interesting anyway, so I thought I'd mention it. Um, I once had this psychedelic orgasm, actually. Um, I used to have them every now and then, like I just have these psychedelic orgasms, and um, they were rare, but this was definitely the most psychedelic one I had. And I remember during it, I actually saw like, well, during the, the earlier that day before the orgasm, I... Jeez, this sounds weird, man. <laughs> the day of that orgasm, I'd seen this cloud, which, um, I don't know, just looked, it really got my attention. It was like this, this face in the cloud with its hand outstretched to me like that. And then at night I had this orgasm and I remember seeing the cloud again. And um, some part of me was like explaining that's me after I've died. And I didn't really understand that. I was like, what the fuck are you talking about? But maybe it has something to do with this. Maybe when we see faces in the clouds or the trees, faces are actually like metaphysical vessels for these spirits or these machine elves to watch us through as audience members after we've died. Um, and I guess including, included in amongst those machine elves is us after we've died. Maybe that's going on. You know, I've talked about seeing faces a lot as well. I know there's a part of our brain that creates this experience for us. Um, I think it's pronounced the fusiform gyrus. It is easy to cut off seeing faces in the clouds and in trees as just a side effect of the mind. But, um, you know, shamans have been calling them our ancestors for a long time. And um, I will, as I said, I'll make a video on what I think the machine are because I also think there are ancestors. I think there are a lot of things. <laughs> it's really confusing stuff, these machine elves. Now, as for why we experience this, so I think our relationship to the machine elves are very similar to the relationship between uh, a video game character and a video game player. A video game player plays a video game and then plays as a, as a character. And uh, sometimes to pass a mission or a level, he has to die many times. And you know, each time he restarts and he plays a little bit differently until eventually he learns what he has to do to pass the level. But the character has no idea he's starting over and over again. The character just thinks every time that he's having the experience for the very first time. Well, I think that our ego is like the video game character and the machine elves are like our video game player. The machine elves live our life entirely and we become one of the machine elves. We watch ourselves as an audience member. We learn through this process and then we start over again and then we can make different choices because of that. We don't retain everything. It's not like it's, you know, the video game comparison is not entirely um, accurate because I think that the ego itself has its own consciousness and the ego resists the machine off. And the machine off has started over again and it's trying to guide you to making these choices that it knows are different, but the ego is quite powerful and the ego wants to make its own choices. The ego, like the character, assumes that it's living for the first time. It assumes its outside world is the only real thing that's going on. And the thing about our ego is that it's something that was probably born from a time when we had to look over our shoulder um, constantly or else we'd be killed by a predator. And it's like, well, 
that's not our reality anymore, but our ego kind of retains those thinking patterns. So it's kind of up to you. It's up to you which life you want to live. You can listen to your ego, which will keep you safe. It may not make you as happy as you want to be, but you will be safe. Or you can listen to your machine elves, which will make you exposed, maybe put you in risk sometimes, but it does so to make you your happier self. It wants you to face your shadows because it's the shadows where light has never been before. And it has to explore new things in order for it to evolve and pass the level. So why did the machine elves show me that this is what happens to us after we die? Well, I think the machine elves are obviously benevolent beings. So any interaction they have with us is for our betterment. And I know one thing that humans are guilty of is kind of anticipating our happiness. It's like, we always say to ourselves, we'll be happy when something happens. And I'm guilty of this for sure. I know that I had this idea that if I stay up late working on my projects and first thing in the morning I'm working on my projects, always working hard, that eventually I'll achieve my dreams. But staying up late and working hard on my passions is the dream. And that's what these machine elves kind of do is they make you realize the things that you know but don't really want to acknowledge within yourself. It's like all of the happiness that I think comes with achieving my dreams, that's available to me right now. And so all of the happiness that you imagine is available to you in heaven once you die, that's available to you right now because your afterlife experience may very well be reliving your life once again. It's not to say that heaven isn't real, it's just to say that heaven isn't something that's waiting for us after we die. Heaven is here on earth if we want it to be. If you want it, you can have it. The only person that's stopping you from having these things is you. So that's, I think that was kind of the message here that the machinos were showing me because every time I've encountered them, they always have something lovely to say. And after seeing this, obviously I felt eternal as well, which is beautiful. This feeling of that you never die is, is, a, is a wonderful thing because of our massive fear of death but <laughs> um just this this i think that was a message that i pulled from it as well which um yeah it was nice so i don't know if this is the only thing that happens to us when we die if i had to guess i'd say no um, the machine elves have taken me to a white light in a previous trip as i said before on dmt um, and many people have reported seeing this white light uh, both on dmt trips and through near-death experiences and, you know, people, even when we're alive, have this idea that when we die, we see a white light at the end of the tunnel. So this could be something that's waiting for us. Um, and maybe after meeting the white light, we reflect on our life or um, maybe we have one experience or the other. I, I really don't know. The machine elves didn't really explain any of that. So this might just be a potential experience or it might just be that we have to experience this after going through the white light or something like that. So anyway, I think that's the video. Uh, I don't really have much else to say. So I'll leave it there. But anyway, have a great day, guys, and I'll see you soon.